Let me ask you this question. $98 billion yeah. worth of policies in this budget package. We've heard from everyone, from the Fed to the RBA to the IMF, pretty much everyone calling for the kitchen sink to be thrown at this once-in-a-lifetime crisis. Is this a sense of caution in the budget? Could more have been done? We are doing as much as we think is required, clearly. And, I mean, we are providing very substantial, in fact, historically unprecedented fiscal support into the economy, supporting businesses, supporting jobs, supporting those Australians who lost their job as a result of this COVID recession through no fault of their own. And, indeed, now to support the strongest possible economic and jobs recovery. I mean, we presented last night our plan to get Australia out of this COVID recession and to get Australians back into work. So one of the problems, of course, these tax cuts are one of the centrepieces of the budget. They've been moved forward. But the criticism overwhelmingly is that they address these middle to high income earners. We know that's not where the spending is going to be. So should it have been more targeted towards the other part of the demographic? And would, say, a temporary halt to the GST have been more effective in getting domestic consumption up? Well, uh, firstly, uh, you know, they do not uh, favour uh, middle and high income earners. I mean, they're very much targeted at low and middle income earners. And our expectation certainly is uh, that that segment of the population uh, will uh, spend uh, most of uh, that uh, additional money in their pockets uh, and that it will boost, it will help boost aggregate demand across the economy. But it is only one of a whole series of measures. I mean, one of our biggest uh, fiscal support measures is uh, uh, giving the opportunity on a time limited basis to the end of June 2020. Uh, for uh, businesses to fully deduct uh, the uh, cost of uh, any uh, investment they make to invest in their future uh, growth and success uh, by making it a time-limited opportunity for any business with a turnover of up to $5 billion. It provides uh, the uh, encouragement for businesses uh, to uh, make that decision to invest now rather than to invest later. And, and we do know, of course, that uh, a growing business that is investing in their future uh, will uh, hire more Australians again, and that is what the objective is of the exercise. There's also criticism that perhaps this is just a mix of old ideas, just tax cuts, wage subsidies, business tax breaks, at a time when the economy was slowing even before the pandemic. So how does this budget address those issues? Well, our economy was in very good shape before this uh, pandemic. I mean, our economy continued to grow uh, at a time when uh, economies in other parts of the world were struggling. Uh, we were into uh, our uh, you know, 29th year of continuous growth. Um, so uh, the fundamentals in the Australian economy remain strong. Uh, we uh, have been pursuing for some time a pro-growth, pro-opportunity agenda, including by pursuing a very ambitious free trade agenda to give our exporting businesses the best possible access to uh, key markets markets all around the world, lifting uh, the uh, uh, proportion of our trade that is subject to free trade agreements from 26 to 70 percent, and we're working to boost uh, that further. I mean, we continue to be uh, part of, in, in the part of the world, the Asia-Pacific, where most of the global economic growth will be generated for decades to come. We were all hit uh, by an unexpected crisis event. We all know why we're in the position we're in. Uh, but the fundamentals are strong. We've just got to uh, get, uh, you know, all of that um, uh, incentive out to ensure that businesses uh, get themselves back, uh, you know, in, into that right trajectory. Should there have been special consideration for perhaps those sectors that may not recover as fast, especially given that international tourism really isn't going to be up and running properly anytime before 2022? Well, look, you know, we are providing supports into the economy on, on a, uh, you know, sector-wide and an economy-wide basis. We're not, uh, you know, picking, uh, you know, winners specifically. But there are special supports for those sectors of the economy that um, are most severely impacted, like, you know, the aviation sector and the tourism sector in particular. But, but by and large, what we're seeking to do here is to provide, um, uh, I guess, uh, incentives on a sector-neutral basis so that in the free market, individual businesses operating in the free market, looking for those opportunities to grow and to prosper in this new environment, uh, are uh, encouraged to do the best they can to get ahead. I mean, you know, we, we do know that the principles of the free market uh, continue to be the best recipe to lift living standards and to uh, maximize opportunity for uh, individual people to get ahead, for their families uh, to uh, get ahead, and indeed for the communities they live in uh, to, to get ahead. 
Minister, the budget still obviously shows a lot of labour market slack with unemployment at 5.5% come 2024. The RBA reiterated how getting boosting national employment needs to be a priority. But the problem is, if you take a look at the out years for this budget, the level of government spending falls quite dramatically. So how would you expect to get domestic consumption, unemployment and wage yeah. growth going when yeah. it seems not particularly possible to maintain this level of spending? Yeah. Well, I mean, jobs uh, before this crisis and when we get uh, beyond this crisis uh, will overwhelmingly be created by successful, profitable private sector businesses. I mean, before we went into this crisis, nine out of ten uh, jobs in the Australian economy uh, were uh, created by private sector businesses. And I mean, that is the situation where we need to get back to. I mean, we can't maintain a situation uh, where uh, government and, and taxpayers uh, continue to spend at this crisis level. I mean, we were very focused on providing significant support, but making sure that that support uh, was uh, temporary, uh, was targeted, and didn't bake in structural burdens into the budget bottom line. And, and, and I mean, that is an important feature of making sure uh, that we're in the best possible position to deal with any future economic shocks uh, that might uh, come our way. I mean, you know, in the end, um, it's businesses, uh, private sector businesses, that have to lead Australia out of, this out, of, out of this COVID recession and that have to create the jobs that our economy needs uh, to get ourselves back in the strongest possible position moving forward. Given how there seems to be a little bit of, of a caution in the budget, according to people who have looked through uh, the numbers, is this a subtle way of pushing the burden on the RBA, which of course has held yesterday trying to give as much uh, yeah. space for fiscal policy? Is this a way to asking the RBA to do more? Well, I got to say, like I, I don't know where you see caution when we are increasing uh, spending uh, this financial year by a historically unprecedented 22.6 percent above inflation, uh, and when we uh, are, uh, you know, uh, going along with a, a deficit this financial year of 11 percent uh, as a share of GDP, which uh, in an Australian context is, um, you know, was completely unthinkable prior to this crisis. So, I mean, we, we are doing what uh, we uh, need to do uh, within reason. Uh, to provide all of the necessary and appropriate fiscal support into the economy. Uh, the RBI will make its judgments uh, independently, as they must, uh, you know, in terms of what the appropriate monetary policy settings are going to be. That is, that is a matter for them. But we, we have made the judgments that we believe are right for this time to guide Australia out of this uh, uh, COVID recession as swiftly as possible into the strongest possible uh, recovery moving forward. Minister, we know that you have plans to leave politics by Christmas after the December budget update. Tell me, are you putting your hat in the ring for the OECD role? Uh, uh, look, um, I, I'm focused on uh, uh, selling our budget uh, today. Uh, there will be an appropriate time uh, to uh, you know, make these sorts of decisions and, uh, depending on that, uh, you know, make uh, relevant announcements. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'll turn my mind to that at the appropriate time. Is it a role that would interest you, hypothetically, of course? <laughs> I, I've uh, made it. Uh, uh, I've got a very important rule not to uh, make a commentary on hypothetical scenarios. Uh, so I, I turn my mind uh, to this or any other opportunity after I've left uh, this job at the appropriate time.